Hi everybody, another episode of Behind the Line with Chef Danny Davis. We're here in Fort Lauderdale, the beautiful pole star behind us here. I'm here with Chef Sergio Marcellis. How are you doing, son? I'm good, my man. How are you doing? I'm good, brother. It's nice to see you. Finally, eh? It's been forever since we've been trying to connect and definitely, you know, back in America for a second, you know, in the middle of a freelance run. So yeah, really happy to be here with you. Awesome, man. It's nice to see you here. So yeah. Sergio, tell me, how, how did you get into Yacht Show? Well, um, I actually went to school down here in South Florida. I went to Le Cordon Bleu here in Miami. Oh, so yeah. um, I always knew about it. Uh, very interestingly, on the second day of school, they bring a professional chef to maybe show you what the life could bring or, you know, see the future a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, what is it like? Yeah. yeah, and then from there, I remember they brought this guy called Stu Shaw, the Miami private chef. And, you know, this guy comes in and he tells that he works on yachts and in houses, mansions, You're that like, he had oh, worked for the guy. Pididi and the Stefans. Sweet. I swear to God, my eyes just went like, what? <laughs> so, honestly, you know, at that point, I remember he finished, I follow him out of the classroom. I was like, hey, how are you? You know, I'm in Sergio. I just got here, but you know, I definitely love to do something like that. I always kept in touch with him. And then- Oh, that's good, man, that you kept in touch with him. Yeah, you. always, always. Yeah. And he actually did get me into like a few gigs early in my career. Um, and then from there, you know, the Venezuelan kids, they hang around. And I remember one kid, uh, he was in the next classroom uh cooking also and he just came to me one day he's like hey you want to work and i just like oh yeah sure uh, for sure and um, he took me into like a little catering event and then i met another yacht chef who interestingly knows enough was in below deck sailing oh, right. marcos espaciani yeah the venezuelan chef so yeah, you know, as, as, as I met these people and, you know, Marco actually, when I was in college, offered me a position, but I sadly was in the middle of university, so, you know, I couldn't go. You know how yachts are. You, you go in yeah, and yeah, it's, it's months. Now, it's, right? Yeah, exactly. Two, three days. Boom. Yeah, exactly. So at that point, I didn't, but I always knew about the industry. I always, it was so always something that caught my attention and I wanted to do. So what tipped you? What, what made you go from being in restaurants and stuff over to the yachts? Well... To be quite honest, it was just in a little by little situation because I did hotels, restaurants after college and everything. And then I went back home. I stopped cooking for Where's like home? Venezuela. Venezuela. At that point was Venezuela. And went back home, stopped cooking for, yeah, for quite a while, actually. Wow. I would say almost two and a half, three years. What were you doing instead? Uh, my dad and I opened a company selling model oil uh and tires and like car parts it's totally like different. completely different but it was a great lesson also in you know in entrepreneurship in how to deal with employees in actually being an owner I take that sense of ownership that sometimes i feel that is so necessary doesn't matter what career you're going to be dedicating yourself to sure like man management level that yeah of exactly things. so so yeah it was really good and then one night i was in in venezuela on the beach um and it sadly hit me that doesn't matter how much I achieve here in the country, I wasn't never going to be free to like walk on the street, to maybe be safe. Venezuela, at that point especially, it was a very insecure place. It still is, but a little bit less now. Uh, and I had lived a lot, another life, you know, I've lived here in the United States. Yeah. I have seen other things, you understand me? So I knew that there was a life out there and I just decided to come back to it. Yeah. And so what did you do? Like, what was the method? Did you go to do... So, do yeah, I went to do... Actually, <laughs> I went into my first yard without a CCW. Oh, uh, shit, don't tell that. <laughs> guys, if... Not a good move. Not a good move, but, you know, happens sometimes. So, um, I got the first chance, you know, right place, right time. Uh, I started like you, like you should do in the beginning. Network my ass out. Yeah. I moved myself, you know, I was here for a lot of the shaking hands, going to try to meetings, um, doing things here and there, went to all the, all the agencies, you know, and, and, you know, shout out to Eddie Guzman. Yeah. She, she very lovely was like, you know, there's a meeting, you should go. And it was like that. And it was one and it was another. And then. So you're doing like try network meetings. Yeah, like network to, meetings and that's. Exactly. Went to. to the 17th Street. Exactly. Yeah. Um, when I joined the For Loyal Jack Group, it was like less than 10,000 people. Yeah, right. Yeah, like <laughs> back in the day, you know? And. And that's Rotational how I get. Uh, super Yacht Chefs as well. I'm yeah, thinking. exactly. Yeah. I think that's where I, I met you. I yeah. Could have been. So, yeah, so you know, into those things, you start 
just organizing yourself and making sure that uh, you get those positions. And my first one I went in was a 42 meter. Uh, I didn't do well. No? No, not at all. So 42 but, meter, you were the sole chef on that? Yeah, yeah, I didn't do well. I just, you know, first job, first try, I hadn't been cooking for a while, a lot of things. It's a, it's a lot of pressure as well, right? Yeah, so you know, to do, but... To do well. To do well, but you know, I always like cooking. I was always a really good chef. So, you know, you get you get back into cooking, and it's just one of the things that I always say: get back into being hot. You know, when you've been cooking two, three months, four months in, you're hot. Yeah. You know, like the things are just Food's coming popping. to first popping. Like you're coming working. exactly. You're coming off the systems. You know, you you have it. You know, your mental timing is on. That's why it's important to keep yourself always, you know, in, in the mix, even if it's like. You're doing one week a month or two weeks a month of proper cooking, you know? Even as a head chef, sometimes it's hard because you start dealing with like all the management and yeah, yeah. sometimes you, you know, if you're in port, no gas, you have to well, yeah, push that, yourself. Yeah, that happened to me. I, I, uh, I was cooking for a long time and kind of got myself into consultancy and they just didn't cook. We just doing meetings and, and exactly you know, and, all that kind of stuff. And, and it's really hard. You're not hard. fresh, are you? Like you say, you're not hot. You need to be on the pots and pans, shaking and baking to know what's going exactly. on. Exactly. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I love that part. You know, I love sitting in the office, creating menus, creating concepts. And, you know, we will definitely fall into the, the concepts that I'm creating at the moment. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's just that, you know, I, I joined cooking because for me, it was always happiness to cook. You know, my, my family likes to cook. I cook for my mom. The reason why I enrolled myself in the first culinary school was because while I was waiting for business school, I was just like, well, I'm just gonna like join a little cooking course. And look at this, you know, cooking course, 13 years later has become my career. And, yeah. and you know, I've been super fortunate to have traveled the world with it, which is a really good story that I have of my first day in La Cordon Blue, where, you know, they always like, introduce yourself and you know, what is one of your dreams, your goals? And I, you know, with my broken English at that time, it was, hello, my name is Sergio Marichale, I'm from Venezuela. I'm mean, drinking to travel the worldwide cooking. Made it happen, eh? Hey, but, doing it, bro. Exactly, nice. man. <laughs> but, but you know, into those things, it's like you have to keep yourself doing it. Yeah. And you have to keep yourself pushing. And that is the hardest part sometimes, you know, when you hear that, com hit that complexity. Because you do, you get to a certain spot and you're like, oh, I'm too shit no more. And so, what, what advice would you give to a, you know, a, a chef that's thinking of moving into yachting? Like, what, what, few words could you say to them to kind of inspire them or, 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 or advise them to do a good job? Network. Network. Honestly, talk with people a lot, a lot of people, different people, different points of view, different, different everything, you know, get on the forums, see what people are saying, you know, like even now that we have the WhatsApp groups, yeah. see what people are saying, you know, there people's always preaching in there. 80% of the advices are good. I'm going to say an 80. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to put an 80. It's so about around there. Some of it's like, like ooh. some of it's like, look, ooh, buddy, you know. <laughs> but we love your WhatsApp groups. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know they're amazing, honestly. Yeah, they you are. Know, yeah. Shout out, but it's a great network, isn't it? Yeah, people? completely, and and you get a good laugh sometimes. Yeah, right? for sure, for sure. Um, a lot of great, um, a lot of great networking also for restaurant, which I love. Um, I actually met another fellow yacht chef. I think he's out in the industry right now, but his hobby was going to the best restaurants in the world. Oh yeah. Yeah, and... I've thought of a few guys who do that. Yeah, you yeah. probably know him, Neil, Neil Walker. Yeah, yeah, I think he still works. Yeah, yeah. and Shout then... Shout out to Neil. So, Neil, thank yeah. you so much for the seats every time, lad. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, it was it's very interesting because, you know, you get to meet certain people like us that we do different things, you know? Like, I'm very well connected, like, in Ibiza, like, in the music industry, and those are oh, my yeah. friends and my people. Yeah, I've seen a lot of your stuff about yeah. Ibiza. So, yeah, nice you know, place, so it's yeah. just, like, one of those things, that, you know, like, a lot of us do different things or have different lives, and... As yacht chefs and people that work together, we understand each other a lot. Sometimes better than when you get with a street chef, which, you know, also like, I'm not saying anything about uh, executive chefs. They have a lot of pressure too. It's just, just a different ball game, But it's game, two different it? ball games, yeah. you know? You know Being you're on playing, a yacht in a beautiful location is yeah. very different to grinding in a hotel or in a restaurant. Completely, you know? And sometimes it's just that, you know? It's, it's, it's not even like the same sport, you know? You're playing rugby, like, no, you're playing baseball and cricket. Completely different things, you understand me? Yeah. They're similar, but not the same. So what are you doing now? What's, uh, what's happening? What's popping? You said you were in between um, freelance gigs at the moment. Yeah, so what I'm doing right now after, after the summer in Ibiza, and, and this is something that you know, we can talk openly about it, 
the markets are different in mm -hmm. Europe than they are here. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, and in general, the Caribbean market to the um, European market is different. So while I've been in the European market for a while already, I am trying to get back out there, you know? So a few boats contacted me when I was home in Europe and I just finished a nice uh, charter last week with um, at the Nassau charter, the Bahamas charter show. Oh yeah. Yeah, so you know, cooking for brokers and advertising the boat, really nice. Uh, Morial Latitude. Shout out to Mo Shot Latitude. And then. And the, and the Bahamas boat show, that's like a pretty new thing, right? It's that's a pretty new thing. To but, grow. but honestly, me that I haven't been in the Bahamas for three years or so now, I went to Nassau and, and you see some growth. Yeah. There's growth it's in the air, it's changing, you know? Um, a lot of it is also because, you know, those FTX guys were throwing money like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But um, no, but honestly, it is growing. It's, you're, you're seeing a society building on app. Yeah, you get microgreens and yeah. more produce. The, the fish is getting better. People are more organized. And, and I think COVID really focused people on, on delivering it to the boats and getting the best product to them. And, and you know, yeah. there's a lot of provisioners that are, are nailed down into, into the Bahamas now. And in the Caribbean, you can get fantastic produce throughout the Caribbean now. And it's necessary, you know, like, to be quite honest with you, when, when money's not an issue, like in our industry, where you know, our budgets are very lean. I'm not saying that you're going to spend, I don't know, ten thousand dollars in microgreens, not necessarily, but, but our budgets are 10, exactly, food, exactly. Yeah. But you know, it's very lean when you can move and you have those big charter uh, APAs. You know, where you're talking that you have fifty, sixty thousand dollars for you know twenty days or something like that. You can definitely make an absolute showcase, yeah. not only of your talent, but like of the world in general. You know, you, you have to take it on an experience, and and that is. I'm so glad now that we, as an industry itself, have grown on to actually understand these things. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it's one thing to be a chef. It's another thing to be a, a, a soup yacht chef. And it's another thing to deliver the, the highest level, you know, on the beautiful yachts like we have behind us, in the beautiful locations with a chef that's delivering the best quality food. Stewardess is making sure that the seam is seamless. I mean, that's what we're doing here, right? And that's why I love the business. Completely, man. And that is like... You know, me that I did, I went into land base for a moment. It's a completely different ball game, you know, when you're in land. Even though you might have the same standards, you might have the same thing. It's a little bit of a different ball game, and understanding that also takes a second. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, it's, I found that I'm a, I'm able to lock things down now. Get a better provisioners, get more organized, have deliveries set up. Um, whereas on a yacht, that's the biggest headache is the logistics. It's the logistics, and that is also like, for example, I always tell the, the example when I was in the Pacific. Of you know you have to think all the way until the last tomato four weeks ahead. Yeah. Because your cargo space is so limited, but any time that you can get things in, it's just like you know. Where, one where more else were you in the Pacific? Well, I was very lucky to join Moriat Suri in French Polynesia, and then from oh, there beautiful. we went to Fiji, and we were around the islands, and then we also went to Australia, where we finished with our first Fantastic! Year. I spent some time in Fiji. Beautiful place. Yeah. Oh, amazing! Actually, more than the more than the place, I would say is the people. Yeah, beautiful the people, people is incredible. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you went up to Alaska as well, right? I did. That was a couple of years ago. One of my first explorer yachts gave me that opportunity. They don't call it the last frontier for anything, you know? It's incredible. <laughs> it looks so cold. Man. It's incredible. Yeah, well, you know, like that cold situation, like I went to the Arctic recently too with another vessel. Mm -hmm. I'm just too brown for that, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I just, I just can't, just, I, don't, I don't deal well in that weather. It's just, and, and you know, I'm here, I'm yeah, good. I'm like a lizard, I need the sun. Yeah, I need sun, I need to organize myself, I need heat, I need people, I need doing. I can't be into that. You know, there's just wide. Like, yeah. One point Same I went color. out. I went, at one point I went out to the tundra. And I was like, this is probably how that looks like. You know, all white. You know, it's just one of those things. So, um, but you know, it was one of one of my most amazing experiences. Yeah. I I learned a lot as a chef, as a person. I learned a lot of my provisions, and and you know, and we can go back into what I've been doing lately, which is I've been freelancing a lot after. After Suri, I really haven't joined a vessel permanently. I've been freelancing. And been... how are you finding that? Is that do you prefer it from permanent work or you know? Well, I I joined the, the Ibiza private island, and that was a that was a space of time. You know, that was five six months in the summer. Uh, I took that decision. You know, I wanted to go online. I wanted this opportunity because it was a it wasn't a lifetime. You know, yeah. it was an opportunity to definitely say yes to. But at the same time, is um, 
I just feel trapped, especially like my last job, we were dealing with COVID. We really couldn't get out of the vessel, you know, all yeah. these different situations that happened throughout the pandemic. And it's okay. But as that was happening, myself, I was starting to look a little more into, you know, getting out of it, like having a little life, having a balance between work and my life. And I think that yeah, for sure. COVID you can, gave me... You can push yourself right into work yeah, too much, right? COVID gave me that perspective. And that's why I actually been, you know, freelancing on vessels. I've been here one month and another. But the way that I found this is, you know, it, it's a balance into what you do. So, well, so what are you doing now? Tell me about it. So what I'm doing now is I'm in the middle of a freelance run. So I'm just doing freelancing and then I will start, I'm starting a, a concert of private din men, dinners in Ibiza. So it's called Mace Private Dining. Mace Private Dining. Look at us. Is there a website for that? Or a place people can go to see more information about it? Macedining.com and then the social media and all the promotional packages will be arriving very soon. I think by the moment that this comes out, we'll actually be Yeah, out. we'll tag it all on the bottom. Right? Yeah, yeah, amazing. Thank so you. So check out the link below. Check us out. Book your private dinner experience in Avisa. We also have thematic dinners and everything else in between. I'm also doing Mason Board. Uh, Mason Board is pre-prepare meals for day charters. Oh, like day charter, on class, but on yeah. class on board. Okay. So, Mace on board is more based out of the day charter market. Mm -hmm. As you know, the day charter market is growing exponentially. Yeah, it's really big in Ibiza. Uh, in not a, in Ibiza, in Miami. In right? Miami, it's gigantic. In places like Ibiza, Mallorca, Menorca, it's very big. You know, all these places that have great cruising, that can be done in an afternoon, and then and there's smaller boats like the, the 100 meters yeah, 100 feet boats 100 so. feet 60 80s you yeah. know the mangusta like two three crew yeah yeah, yeah so, so what is easy you know a friend of mine actually owns a company that has a few and <clears throat> we were bouncing ideas and that came up to it so yeah so that is part of the the umbrella brand for for mace dining in, in for this summer and that is what i'm starting to do at the same time i have a mace por suerte uh, Chefware, which is a brand. Yeah, that cool. Let's hold, hold on up. Let's Thank see you. Yeah. So we have these new brand stylish jackets. And that's like a waffle material. That's lovely. that's a waffle material. It's super fresh. It's called the Ferradura one. And the one that I'm wearing is also another one that is in a different angle. And it just looks different. It's so how, how do people get hold of this? Okay. These are going to be exclusively sold through our Instagram page, which is Maze.Suerte Chefware. And they are runs of 10 meaning 10 are done in each size, and then we're gonna be releasing new collections every time. Sweet, like designer chef, where I love Yeah, that. exactly. Yeah. This is actually a partnership that I have with an Italian fashion designer. Oh yeah? Yeah, we met in Ibiza and we started balancing, you know, like when you connect with people. Yeah, yeah. And that just happened with Simone, you know, we were, we were talking and then I just told him, you know, I always have an issue finding cool jackets. Actually, the chef that you, the jacket that you have, I have it too. I love it, actually. Yeah, I mean, this is like a standard, right? You see yeah, this everywhere. Yeah, exactly. But I was looking for the change, you know? I was looking into what to do differently. And into when that started happening, uh, I spoke with him, and then we put a few things together. We came up with six designs. Uh, one, which is the pants that I'm wearing right now, which are called high traffic. So for those days, you have to provision. You have to move a lot. You're going to be cooking. They're lighter. And most of the designs come in three pieces. So you have the pants, the jacket, a shirt, or the pants jacket, and then apron. Oh, yeah, idea. so it's like it's a whole it's a whole package. So you look apart. You know, this is more based for the private chefs, the chef of the yachts, that you look, have to look good. Yes. I'm allowed to throw this information out there. You work in a super yacht, look like it. Yeah, right. <laughs> you want to look professional. You want to look professional. You want to look clean. You want to look neat. Make sure you do it. It's important not only for your career, but it's important for the overall operation. Because a clean chef looks like a nice chef. You're gonna look scrubby, and you're the chef. People say, "One, yeah, who's gonna want to eat your food?" Cook. Right? Yeah, you know, yeah, one. So, so yeah, into that, that is what I'm doing. And then the maze dining actually follow my passion, you know, like I did, I went to Bulgaria, actually, oh, yeah? to cook with the master chef of Bulgaria. Fantastic, how was that? It was interesting. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> uh, but it taught me quite a lot. If I'm very, very honest with you, it taught me so much, which is, you know, how to live a life similar to what we have outside. And then as I saw her operation in Bulgaria, 
I met another cats in Palma that are doing the same. And like with every business, guys, every business, somebody's gonna read you the script. You're just gonna have to find the right person to do it for you. They're gonna tell you, this is manually how it goes. These are some of the stuff. And then you figure it out yourself. But somebody's gonna give you a script. It's gonna be online. It's gonna be on a, on a forum or it's gonna be in person. But you're gonna get it mildly when you're trying to establish something new. So into that, uh, they gave me a script. And it's very well what I wanna do in Ibiza because at the moment, this market is on tap for these kind of situations. Yeah. There's a lot of private chefs, but not full dining experiences. You know, mm -hmm. like come to, come to a villa, come to a private space, have it for yourself, have a supper club party per se. Yeah. And then we're doing different concepts, you know, from uh, cannabis infused, you know, silo saving experiences to oh, right. yeah. yeah, dinner with the stars, which should be the dinners that are done with like DJs. So people get to interact with a DJ while they're having dinner, which is a different That's a really cool concept. It's a different concept of what could be happening. So yeah, we're starting that at the moment. I have a few investors on board and a few interesting people so you know in the few, next few months you're definitely going to be seeing a lot of more of that content on my social media and opening those channels too that's super cool someone wants to check you out how, how do they find you well they can find me at sergio marichales on tiktok and instagram yeah as well as facebook and the easier way honestly is, is instagram you know that's my most used social media that's where i love most of my content recipes uh ideas you know lifestyle content uh, funny stuff, quite a lot, and then you know that is my my favorite. But I'm growing on TikTok. Yeah, you know, I'm not trying TikTok yet. To be quite honest with you, is is fun. It, you just have to. It, it takes a second. You know, you have to catch the drift. It's gonna be um, how you start editing your videos. Make sure that you have the audios. But believe me, no, I'm doing. I'm not doing it by myself. You know, I, I like. I follow a few pages. Somebody helps me with a few of my social media. Uh, it's important. You have yeah, to make so it look a little more. It's the uh, way that you uh, project yourself, isn't it? Definitely. Exactly. Yeah. Any advice I could give to for new people would be, you know, make sure your social media is nice and clean. You look professional. Your food looks good, and you're not, um, you know, shit posting or trolling people. You know, you keep it nice and clean and nice and respectful, and, and present yourself as, as well as you can. Completely. And and that is the biggest part, you know, like the the social media part is now. It's not your validation. It is even right. if it, even if it's like it could be all fake, but it's still your validation. But it's what people go in and look at, right? So if you're exactly. going to be hired, you know, the captain says, "Oh, we want to get this chef. Go and have a look at him." You've got the rest of the crew looking at your Facebook profile, Completely. looking at your Instagram, seeing what kind of food you are, who you are as a person. They're trying to work that out because you know, as a yacht chef, you're not just cooking. You have to live with those people, you know, and and it's stressful. It's hard. It's hard to be uh, on your top game 100 percent all the time. That's, that's one part that, and, and I learned this very early in the industry, you know, I think that you, you have to get it to start getting a little thicker skin in this industry yeah. very early, you know, it's, it's rough. Um, this industry like trading, you know, like banking, it's a two-strike industry. The first one, I understand it, I forgive it, let's work it out. The second one is unforgivable, you out. Yeah, fine. Happens, right? There is no three strike system. There is no, let me see how we can do it in the morning, which is the difference in the street, too. You know, when you're in land, it's a lot of strikes. There's a lot of tries. There's a lot of, let me give you another chance. That doesn't exist on the yards. And who, who, who inspires you as a chef? Like, who do you look at? What kind of styles are you looking at nowadays? I always been a creative chef, so I follow those guys. Uh, you know, David Munoz, for example, Diverso, Madrid, three star. Yeah. Uh, that guy, you know, he goes, uh, he's very well known. He goes to Hong Kong where I live uh, and, you know, he gets ideas and then he brings it back and puts his own twist on it. So I am more of that kind of chef. You know, I like to combine flavors. I like to be creative and do different things. My plating is very creative. It's yeah. very colorful. Yeah, your plating looks awesome. Yeah, like you know, so, you know, like I am, you know, shout out to Grant, man, honestly. So do you pitches? No, my grand is my mentor, one of my mentors. He's the guy that actually taught me how to play like this. Like that was that was my retraining, you know, I always joke that, you know how Batman goes to, 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 to Tibet to like train with 
for like the first movie. I always train that you, people, you have to go to Asia, retrain yourself and then come back. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was, that was actually for myself. You know, I, I, I always say that my life is a before and after Hong Kong. Yeah. So how long did you stay out there? I stayed for like a year, pretty much. I was working in a 60 meter yard, but it was everything, you know, it was the culture, it was the job. It was my friends, my network of people. It was the chef that I met also. Like I, met, I met a lot of like chef and I went to like Michelin stars and like- Yeah, I, did, I try to do that I whenever I get to a new place, try to go yeah, to a different restaurant. Yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, that was it. So that's my inspiration, you know, the creative chefs. I am very big onto that. So, you know, like I'm more into, for example, watching Chop and yeah. seeing how people either fuck up or like, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> uh, or, you know, or, you know, those, those few different things, you know, I'm very big on, on creative cooking. I like a lot of that. So I watch a lot of that. My content is very curated into creative, nice plating, different flavors. I'm not really that much into a whole gelification and stuff like that. If mm -hmm. I'm very honest with you, yeah, like the modernist stuff, the modernist stuff, I'm more into nice plating, nice color, well cooked ingredients, uh, that match. You know, there, like great a, sauces. Is there anyone on Instagram or anywhere? Like, where do you get your like stuff from? If you're going to plan a menu, do you like pull pictures off Instagram for say? No. Or, or do you go into the books or? No, I go into it? the books. I have a I have a collection. I would say of almost 400, 500 cookbooks oh, by wow. this point. Yeah, they're between my, you know the clouds on my computer, uh, and then that's what I do. So what I do is I will grab these these books, and I will just go through them completely. And what happens is I will choose out of the recipes that are there. Okay, this can be done in a yard. This can be done. I like this. So what I'll start is I'll start doing a list of them dishes. Yeah. And that's what I do. So I'll have, you know. But you're going to restrict it for, I, I can't do this on a yard. I, I can can't do get this. Ingredient. Exactly. This ingredient. I don't have seven people and three days to do this dish. You yeah. understand? Like some of the Michelin restaurants are like that. You yeah. know, they have yeah, recipes so that are time, like. Right? You know, it's like, yeah, if you have seven people and one guy that is going to put in pulling one leaf at a time for seven hours, cool. I don't have time for that. No, right? Like, you got to do the crew food. You gotta I got to do crew food. To come in I got to organize the sous chef. I got to make sure that all the food is done. You know, it's just too rough. Yeah, yeah. On a regular crazy. Wednesday. Yeah, no. <laughs> regular Wednesday. No, man. Smashing out some Michelin stuff. But yeah. we do it, right? We do it day in, day out. We do out. it for sure. And that, and that is kind of where, where I come from. You know, like I'm, I like creative cooking. I like different cooking. I'm going to be wrong. My flavors are very, very standardized, very organized. You know, mm -hmm. like if it's Peruvian, it's, you know, we're definitely doing the yellow chili paste. You know, if we're going to Asia, we're definitely going with the highest end of the ingredients that we can find, you know, from the Japanese stuff to the Chinese and everything in between. It's just that. Do you have any um, provisioners or people you use that you're like, I go to that guy for this stuff? Anyone like that? Look, uh, Robert is always, you know, a great stop when you are in uh, here in Florida at the international, international market. market. It's just perfect, you know, you get your little things and stuff. Uh, in Ibiza, I have, you know, the beautiful fish people that I have um and you're getting that you're getting that straight off the fisherman straight off the fisherman from the wholesaler actually nice man. yeah uh i try to go you know as high at the at the at the end i can like for example here in, in south florida i get all my fishes from like independent which i worked with them when i was working at the ritz carlton in ball harbor that i know them from 10 12 years you know what are they called? independent seafoods shout out uh, to independent seafood they're in west palm beach and i use them the meats, sometimes I use provisioners, sometimes I buy it online. You know, am I cooking a dinner? Am I cooking for a week? Yeah, and you can get really good stuff like uh, Snake River Farm, I, I use that. Yeah. I use um, Palm Beach Meats as well, they're really good for Wagyu. Shout out to Palm Beach Meats. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of them around here, right? For, especially for proteins. You yeah, really for proteins stuff. it's really easy. And then for, for fruits and veg, you have your OG guys that, you know, they've been delivered, the guys in Pompano, the other ones. And you know, if you're in a rush, you go to the supermarket and you you, true, you yeah. do you do a full raid. Uh, nowadays, especially here in Florida, they see you walking every one of this and a hat. Oh boy, they're gonna be following you around. Especially on 17th Street. Yeah, for sure. They're gonna know. <laughs> oh, you need a, you need a case? Not an issue. You know, and they, they build it all together for you. Not an absolute not an issue. Yeah, they actually have um uh, at the uh, Whole Foods here. They have a dedicated person just for for yacht chefs. Yeah, exactly. And you can put your orders in and pick it up. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 that with everything, you know, even here in America, it's a little bit easier. I I I happened to meet a fella that was cooking for the P. Diddy camp at Burning Man last year. Yeah. And he had the same issue, you know, he went, he bought some steaks online, and all of a sudden, the steaks were not up, up to par, went to Whole Foods. You know, I need this much. Yeah, you have it tomorrow here. It's fantastic. They make it happen for you. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, that, that one is not that much of a, of a frost. My micros, always from Chef Garden. Oh, that's yeah? the one. When I'm here, Chef Garden. There's nowhere in the world I can find those micros. I'll be honest with you. That's fantastic. I've been Chef around. Garden. I've been around the world. There's those micros, the colors, the flavors. It's just and they've been around perfect. for years, right, Chef Garden? I know. And, and what is great about them is just the variety of stuff they have. You know, the colors, the palettes. You can create so many good dishes and like side dishes just from them micros and them mining stuff and. You know, from vegetables to leaves to flowers to everything else, they're just incredible. And where'd you get your caviar? Caviar's a big thing for me at the moment. We've been trying lots of different ones. Okay. Yeah, and I found it interesting. Um, remind me, the people that have one in New York and one in Paris? Petrosian. Oh, yeah, Petrosian, yeah. Petrosian. Petrosian all the time. Petrosian back in the day, uh, I was working with a provisioner and, you know, they sponsor a few of my shoots, super nice. They send some products for like a photo for my photo shoot. Oh, that's fantastic. So yeah, super nice. Uh, always. Shout out to Petrosian. Russian, thank you. <laughs> we can do it again, anytime. <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> I'm free, you know, I'm keen to do content. Um, but yeah, into those things, that's pretty much how I got it. That's cool. So um, what's next for you then? Where, where are you going in the future? What's the, uh, the trajectory? Where do you see yourself for five years? Whoa. Uh, selling this company most likely or like in the midst of selling this company my idea is to grow this into a fully franchise uh, yes yeah, a good idea I think it's a good concept yeah full of fully franchise method uh, and it's the idea of my investors too so I think that that will be the, the that will for sure be the, the goal to sell it at one point you know still have a stake still have a say but to sell the majority of it and yeah, that is where I find myself. Like, you know, I, I've been absolutely lucky and, and super grateful the, of traveling the world while doing this. You yeah. know, it's, it's been... That's one of the best It's been incredible, you know? Like, we're talking from, like, the Pacific to the Arctic, all of Europe, here, the Caribbean, America. I know it almost like both coasts. Uh, I've been to Mexico. You know, you, you can name what's a hundred... What's your, like, favorite place to have been? It's, it's really hard to say because, I don't get me wrong, I like Australia, yeah. for example. Like, I, that was a place that, if it wasn't for the time change, I'm sure I would be lived there. Yeah, I, the, I the, spent a long time in New Zealand and just the, the atmosphere, you know, the way people are, their yeah. mentality. Just so refreshing, so nice. Completely. And then, you know, the, the, the sunsets in, in the middle of, like, the Fiji or, oh, like, so beautiful, or man. French Polynesia. It's just something completely different. When you go to the Arctic, you know, you see things that, for me, are completely alien, you know, up until I was 26 years old, I never seen snow. All right. Yeah, I, I come from I a hard- you going to say iceberg or something. No, snow. no, I, yeah. I, I come from a hard country, you know, I, this is me 360 day, no, actually, we're like 380 days out of the year because some days the sun is like twice. Yeah. <laughs> it's like this, it's, but, um, but no, for me, this is my, this is my weather, you know, sunny, nice, hot, so for me, it, that was very interesting, you know, understanding yeah. life in those places. Uh, I went to the Maldives and I saw that, um, you know, being around people in general, that is one of my favorite activities now, actually being in these places and we visit these places, we, we, we haven't been. My favorite activity now is being in the places that we yeah, go. Yeah, meeting the people, eating the food. Meeting the people, eating the, eating the, the food, exactly. Because one thing is that you visit, one thing is that you pass with the boat, you can say, yeah, I was in Monaco, but you didn't actually. Yeah. You haven't been there. Yeah, I've been to Italy a few times, but I've never got onto the, onto the land. Exactly, <laughs> you understand me? So that is one of those situations that for me is my favorite activity. I love Italy, for example. Italy, from its people to the food, to everything else. Now my home, you know, my, my country, how it's Spain. You know, I've been living in Spain for the last four years and it's been warm, it's been nice. I am very lucky. To live in the south, uh, I live in South of Spain in Marbella, mm -hmm. uh, where people is super friendly. Like it's actually their way of being. I and they're friendly, they're loud. Uh, you know, I have a joke that I know two gates before that I'm going home because I hear them already talking. <laughs> two gates before, but 
there's, it's, you know, it's nice. It's, it's one of my favorite places. So Hong Kong will always have a space in my heart. Like I said to you, for me, it was always uh, before and after that. You know, that was two, my two levels up. Yeah. Uh, that moment of my life. And I keep looking back at it. And, and even when we see seen friends from there, because, you know, we see each other around the Yachty areas and around the world all the time. So, you know, the Hong Kong kids and they always go around, but it was just that moment of changing. So that's where I'm kind of going. You know, my five, next five years, to answer your question, are going to be base. You know, are going to be being in a place, creating a life for myself in one place. Traveling, yes, this, this traveling box that you have, not only from being a traveling chef or being a yacht chef, which, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm super lucky that I've been, the traveling bug doesn't go off. It doesn't go off. No, you know, I have a map when I enter my apartment, like a scratch map. Yeah. So every time I go to a new place or anything, I go and scratch it. You understand me? So So you must have cooked for some, um, you know, the top 1% of the world, right? Some fantastic Completely, people. yeah. Is there any experience you want to tell me about or like, I don't want to name drop, but you know, maybe something that really stood out. In well, your you know, my NDAs are all expired or non-existent, so I can speak a little <laughs> better. Uh, I just cooked for Elon Musk oh, and wow. Ibiza. Yeah. Ah, uh, that was a cool, that was interesting. Yeah, which is kind of world, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, my... What did you make him? Um, it was a few different things, you know, like one day it was like a Mediterranean affair. Another day they wanted like a nice barbecue with pizzas. So we did pizzas on the grill. Um, another day it was just like a very nice, fresh Italian meal. So yeah, just a few different things. He wasn't... He wasn't with us for a lot. He was only like three, four days actually with us. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah, That's yeah. That's awesome, right? Yeah, it was cool. It was interesting. And, and in all these things, you know, in general, you you learn new things. You know, one of the things that cooking for the one percenters, you know, from my billionaire bosses to the millionaires, sometimes that do like day charters or like smaller charters to a few others in between, uh, you learn to see the world in a different way. You learn that... Uh, not, not gonna call it the struggle, but like the possibilities exist. You just have to go for it. Yeah. I never met any of these guys that don't have a laundry list of failures. Yeah. Or oh, took risks, right? Or took, took or took exactly. And you're never gonna be on a straight line. It's, you know, and you're never gonna just not make mistakes. Or things are not gonna fall down. It's part of the game. But understanding that it's achievable, understanding that it's possible, and then when it's possible, that those possibilities can be extended is the part that always kept me going back, you know, like learning about these guys, sharing knowledge. And now, you know, I'm not going to say that many are my friends, but many do are acquaintances now that I speak to yeah. or hang around or, you know, we see each other in Ibiza, have a cafe. Uh, things like that happens to me in my life, you know, ex-clients or people that I know that are definitely on that, uh, you know, tax bracket and uh, definitely not yet. Yeah. So is there anything you want to... Uh Anything else you want to say? Like any advice you want to give to anybody? Guys, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to have a lot of fun. You're going to know what's good. You're going to know what's bad. The, the dishes that make you are not the ones that maybe somebody said anything or not, or are the ones that you are the most happy and capable doing it. Having the happiness, having the love for what you do is so important. Because uh, let's be honest, you at one point you also falling in love, you know, have fallen not in love with cooking. Yeah. Falling off like I don't want to yeah. do this or Always, yeah. I feel away. <laughs> but But you love it, right? It's there, it's in your But heart. you love it right there, you know, so you find your second love. Like for me, Ivisa was just that, you know, I found my second love for cooking. My creativity came back, my love for what I was doing came back. And that just happens because you start looking in front of a different set of glasses, you know? Yeah, for sure. Right? And different mindset. Exactly. Maybe it was the energy of the island or maybe myself, I was in a different mental space, but that has just now, you know, splashed so much into just my cooking and my life. And it gave me just like a new, a new heart into what I'm doing. And, and that's when I've been, you know, pushing my most, you know, I've been very happy cooking. Uh, I did a few jigs in, in Europe and then now with like this last one and the next few ones are like, I'm just gonna try, not only do new things, but you know, I'm more happy with what I'm doing. Uh, he's in the bear, he has uh, the bear, the chow. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah he the has a show, phrase right? where he says, at one point there was a lot of noise and I didn't know what was happening. I was just going and doing. And at one point everything just clears and everything just clicks. 
and you know what matches what and how everything goes with everything else. And you understand that you make mistakes and you understand what those mistakes are. That is the part where, I'm not gonna say that I feel I am now, but I feel I'm very close to it. Like all the noise, all the, I'm just doing this for whatever reason, you know, call it money, call it, you know, call it traveling, call it whatever opportunity, call it neat. Now that change into, oh no, now I'm doing it for love. And once you start handling those opportunities and situations with that, it's a little bit easier. It's a little bit more enjoyable. Yeah. And those days are still hard. Days are always hard. They're always long. Ain't nobody here telling you nothing. It's just it's a grind out there, right? Uh huh. <laughs> just still, like, don't get me wrong, even on the villa, I will have 16 hour days. And in the villa, different than on the yachts, they actually change your clock. So if the guy is doing a lot of partying and every stuff like that, he goes from two in the afternoon till five in the morning. So your shift is different. Yeah, you got to change it around. Yeah. You have to, I worked you, on a boat like that. Yeah, we had a guy that came over from from the US uh -huh. to Europe and he wanted to stay in US time. So yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. Up at night doing dinner at like two in the morning. Mm -hmm. just, like, but you change, right? You adapt. You adapt. And that is and that, that is that. That is very interesting. But yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure. Completely. Tell everyone how they get in contact with you, how they get their jackets, how they get um, the meals, the, the meal plan things. That's, tell them. Sure. It's going to be Maze Dining for all the private dining and Maze on board. And it's going to be Maze the Act Suerte chef wear for all our jackets and everything else. And to watch, keep watching content, recipes, and even laugh a little, Sergio Marichales on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Absolute pleasure, brother. Let's do it again sometime.